The Starship System. SpaceX's ambitious rocket that could take us to Mars is ready for its second test flight after months of preparation and regulatory hurdles. The launch date was set for November 17th, but something unexpected happened that pushed it back by a day. What was the cause of this delay? How did SpaceX deal with it? Find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. The Mega Rocket, the most powerful launch vehicle ever built, was expected to lift off on Friday Still, SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk said in a social media post on Thursday that the company would hold off until Saturday to allow time to replace a small part of the rocket. Early yesterday morning, SpaceX conducted a test to activate the grid fins, and it seems that during that time, they discovered a malfunction. According to the SpaceX website, the company is targeting a 20-minute launch window that opens Saturday at 7 a.m. Central. Musk shared that the reason for the the delay was the need to replace an actuator, or a mechanical component that allows movement on one of the rocket's grid fins. Grid fins are metal mesh squares that line the top of the Starship's super heavy rocket booster, and they're used to orient the booster as it heads in for a landing after flight. This will also give SpaceX more time to complete any last second launch flow procedures to ensure everything flows smoothly before the planned launch attempt. And this process has now been carried out as carefully as possible. They have identified the issue, the faulty actuator is out, and appears to be from the grid fin on the far left side in both clips. SpaceX then decided to replace all four grid fins, and they completed three of them at night. Let's just say I wouldn't be too surprised if they finish and test them later today. If SpaceX is unable to launch on Saturday, they do have another opportunity on Sunday, but the weather starts coming into play on Sunday. Sunday and Monday, and with Thanksgiving just around the corner, they could also force a delay into the 27th and beyond. SpaceX is only allotted a few closures per year, and generally around major holidays, they are unable to close the launch site. All eyes will certainly be on Starbase early Saturday morning as the world's most powerful rocket attempts its second test flight. SpaceX will be streaming the launch on their website and of course on X. Be sure to tune in if you're not in the area for the launch. And and honestly, the grid fins are much smaller in proportion to the overall Starship, but they play a crucial role in the entire flight process of this massive rocket. The grid fins are a type of flight control surface commonly used on bombs and rockets. They consist of a network of smaller aerodynamic surfaces within a framework. Due to their unique design, they are often likened to cinnamon roll machines or potato shredders. SpaceX first incorporated them around around 2014 on the Falcon 9 rocket. By the end of 2015, the grid fins successfully aided in controlling and landing the Falcon 9 rocket for the first time. This was a significant achievement that boosted SpaceX's confidence in their design. If you're familiar with the Falcon 9, you'll know it has four titanium grid fins arranged 90 degrees apart. In the case of Super Heavy, there are four large grid fins at the top arranged in a 120 by 60 by 120 by 60 fashion around the vehicle, making the grid fins look like a pair. Super Heavy employs grid fins primarily for aerodynamic altitude control. During its descent back to Earth, these grid fins play a key role in adjusting pitch and roll. On the forward dome of the booster, four electric motors and four pivot points are mounted on an L channel, essentially going around the dome. After attaching the grid fins to the booster, a curved section will connect the motor assembly to the grid fins. When completed, the grid fins can rotate freely left and right. These subtle maneuvers of these fins as Super Heavy descends assist in directing the 72 meter tall booster accurately. This becomes crucial as part of SpaceX's ambitious landing strategy, aiming not only for booster reuse, but also the challenging task of catching it. Achieving this demands an extraordinary level of precision, leaving almost no margin for error. SpaceX strives for optimal control to ensure the booster is precisely positioned for the catch attempt, and the grid fins contribute significantly to this precision during the descent. As Super Heavy descends, these fins not only help in orienting it, but also contribute to slowing down its rapid descent. Despite their fixed design, the fins generate drag, a beneficial effect for reducing the booster's speed before initiating a landing burn. Unlike some fins that can fold, Super Heavy's grid fins remain fully extended during launch, a feature that doesn't pose challenges during ascent due to the rocket's substantial power and mass. 
mass. The combination of the full weight of Starship and 33 Raptor engines easily outweighs any drag induced by the fins. The robust steel construction of the fins is essential to withstand the forces experienced during both launch and landing. This durability ensures their functionality not just for a single launch, but for numerous missions in the future. And that is why the grit fins are super important for the super heavy. Of course, if there is any issue or impact on other components for this flight, it is indeed a shortcoming. During the wait for the launch permit, the grit fins on Booster 9 have been tested multiple times by SpaceX, and we can see it operating normally. Therefore, postponing the launch schedule by a day is likely not a serious problem, and the percentage of certainty for launch is expected to be as high as 90%. While SpaceX and Elon Musk are ready to further expand their leading position with the second launch of the massive Starship rocket, China is closely trailing the world's richest person in Earth's orbit in the field of satellite internet service provision. Although China has achieved significant victories, such as landing on Mars and operating its space station, its ambitions go even further. When Starship succeeds, SpaceX can launch larger Starlink satellites. This in turn pushes China to make even greater efforts to catch up. Beijing is looking to make its mark in a subset of low Earth orbit, what's known as very low Earth orbit. That is the region within an altitude of 450 kilometers that Musk and others have so far bypassed in part because it's harder to keep satellites from getting pulled back to Earth by gravity and more are needed to cover the same landmass. State-owned China Aerospace Science and Industry Corps plans to launch the first satellite in a constellation that will grow to 300 VLEO or Very Low Earth Orbit Satellites by 2030 next month and will be used for communication and remote sensing services according to Kasich. In fact, flying satellites closer to Earth is one of the newest fronts in the space race that's pitted countries and billionaires alike against one another to carve out a share of the core future technology. While still in its infancy, the sector has the potential to be a big earner. Starlink will account for more than $10 billion of SpaceX's total sales next year. That's why this is a lucrative market that China cannot ignore. Besides that, this Starship launch is also the latest salvo in an oftentimes bitter competition between Musk's SpaceX and the Chinese government. Beijing doesn't allow SpaceX to provide internet access to Chinese users via Starlink, and the government has spent years supporting local rocket launch startups with the ambition that they'll eventually compete with SpaceX for orders to put other companies' satellites into orbit. That effectively made the country inaccessible for Musk's company. SpaceX is not launching Chinese satellites, and Starlink is not operating in China, said Pierre Lyonnais, Research and Managing Director at Eurospace, the professional association of the European space industry. You need local licenses, and China will not give those to Musk. Chinese state media have criticized Starlink's ties to the U.S. military, warning last December that SpaceX satellites are part of Washington's ambition for space hegemony. SpaceX, for its part, hasn't pulled any punches in its criticism of Beijing. Testifying to a Senate subcommittee last month, Vice President William Gerstenmaier warned of aggressive state-backed Chinese competition, adding that the U.S. faced well-organized, state-sponsored foreign competition that has no respect for intellectual property. He basically called China a bunch of copycats, but in a fancy way. That contrasts with the friendly relationship that the Musk-run electric vehicle maker Tesla Incorporated has with the Chinese government. During a visit in late May and early June, Musk met with officials in Beijing and Shanghai and toured Tesla's Shanghai factory, which accounts for about half of the company's global production. Also, China won't limit its ambition to just very low orbit satellites, according to Filotico. Beijing's other projects include missions to the moon, development of a huge new version of its Long March rocket that could compete with Musk's Starship, as well as deploying satellites in LEO. We have limited visibility of the full capabilities of China in space, she said. However, when they want to achieve something, they are very good at it. And that's it for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below because your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. And so for that, we thank you again and we hope to see you again next time.